Hi, my name is Nil Tuzcu. I am a member of the Growth Lab at the Harvard Kennedy School. Today, I am going to talk about our case study. In this work, we introduce a design process for developing Metaverse, a data visualization platform that communicates economic data and growth opportunities for cities. Metaverse is a web-based data viz tool developed based on the research at the Growth Lab. The tool provides interactive data visualizations about city economies. The tool covers around a thousand cities worldwide, which are displayed on a map when the user opens the website. The user can either browse the map or type in a specific city name. And once the city is selected, the user is taken to the data visualization pages. The user interface includes a navigational arc on the left that lists available questions, a central data with graphic, and a narrative text on the right. Well, before I discuss the challenges we face in this project, I'd like to provide some background information about our team. The Growth Lab is part of the Harvard Kennedy School, which is a public policy and government school. The lab has three main teams. The academic team conducts research on economic development. The policy team conducts applied research on the field. They collaborate with governments to help with effective policy implementation. And finally, our team, the digital design and development team, translate research into engaging visual interactive narratives that make complex political and economic data accessible to the public. As designers within a government school working with economy and policy researchers, we face several unique challenges that I like to list. First, how can we present data-heavy scientific research in a user-friendly manner? How can we design a tool that serves multiple purposes, including teaching, advanced research, and data-driven policymaking? And finally, how can we develop a tool that effectively guides users to understand economic drivers while also allowing them to generate their own insights? In the first phase of our work, we focus on understanding the academic research and core data sets that underlie our visualization platform. We call this phase two-way knowledge sharing, as we work closely with the academic research to understand their research theory, data sources, methodology, concepts, findings, and insights. During this process, we hold multiple meetings per week to ensure effective communication. While we learn from the academic team, we also communicate our internal design and development process. We explain what it means to translate research into a web platform that will be accessible to the public. Unlike traditional methods of sharing academic research, which typically target the scholarly community through publications, presentations, and teaching, a website is a public good with different use cases. And therefore, our main purpose in the two-way knowledge sharing process is to first comprehend the research and data sets manage the expectations of the academic team, and guide them about the potential use cases of the web platform by non-academic communities. In the second step of the discovery phase, we explore the data sets and decide which data visualization to include in our tool. We developed a novel methodology to guide us through this process. Before creating any data visualization, our team first asks three main questions. What is the question that this data viz tries to answer? What is the purpose this question serves? And finally, who is the intended audience? Since we begin with a research-centric process, we listen to the data to decide what kind of questions it can answer. For example, here, we lay out all potential questions. We then group these questions based on their purposes, which align with the research insights. And finally, for each potential question, we examine the data set based on four dimensions, quality, up-to-dateness, scope, and temporal coverage. This method resulted in four questions to include in our platform. 
Well, now that we know the questions and purposes, the next step is to identify the audiences for these visualizations. We identified potential groups for this tool based on its purposes, which are teaching, advanced research, and data-driven policymaking. While we were familiar with the teacher and researcher personas and their use case of such tools in the Growth Lab, we didn't have much insights into potential users in the policymaking world. To address this, we put together a pilot user group of people in government entities around the world working in various roles. This resulted in five personas to work with. In these personas, we looked for three key dimensions. The first dimension is data literacy level. The second dimension is expertise in economic knowledge. And final dimension is the, their tendency towards being opinionated, being opinionated versus natural. Let me explain what I mean by that. And opinionated users will look for a specific insight in the data visualization, and while a natural user will generally explore, explore the visualization. These three dimensions were essential to decide the information density that is displayed on each page, and to find a good balance between exploratory and descriptive visualization styles. Well, our design process is always highly iterative and involves many interactive prototypes of data graphics. Through prototyping, we try various visual data encodings as well as interaction design techniques. For example, one of the visualizations with the highest information density is the industry space graphic that simply shows how industries are related to each other. We built 25 prototypes to find the right way of visually encoding the data, as well as to find the optimum solution for user interactions. Throughout the process, we conducted multiple user tests and quantified some of the feedback to establish a benchmark system for ourselves. Well, now that I briefly described our process, I'd like to revisit the challenges we faced and summarize two key points in our process that basically helped us overcome them. We found that there are a few important aspects to consider when translating complex research into a user-friendly tool with, with multiple purposes. First and foremost, it was crucial to have a thorough understanding of the research and data. That's why we adopted a research-centered approach in our process, rather than a traditional user-centered approach. We, we started by examining the academic research and then decided the feature sets based on the available core data sets. Our discovery phase of exploring the research and data continued until the last day of the product development. And secondly, we found that using personas effectively and creatively was essential. For instance, we encountered the challenge of creating a tool that guides users to understand economic drivers while enabling them to generate their own insights. To find the right balance, we examined each persona and decided whether they would benefit from an exploratory or a descriptive visualization. We then designed the user interface, fe user interface features that aim to achieve this balance. And finally, I like to point some aspects of the projects that, that did not work well. Particularly, we took two important lessons for future projects. First, we found that having learning materials for a new tool is as important as any feature of the tool. Our interviews revealed that current Metroverse users need detailed introduction on the research concepts and specific visualization. And second, our observations and learnings from the users suggested that the tool needs an onboarding page that summarizes what the tool offers. 
While in sum, we learned that we need to develop a holistic approach to onboarding and teaching the users about the tool, and this needs to be simultaneous with the early design decisions.